One of the complaints I hear about the Roland TD50 is that there's a lack of snare sounds with the wires turned off, something that's featured in previous Roland modules. So I'm going to address that today by showing you how to create a snares off sound with either imported samples layered on a stock sound or with stock sounds alone. Check these out. Welcome back to the eDrum Workshop, I'm Luke and I hope you're having a great day. If you want to stay up to date with electronic drum tutorials, tips, tricks or a whole host of other eDrum related content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. I'm going to get straight into how to create both of these sounds with a sample or without and I'll talk about the main playability differences between the two versions too. We're going to make use of the layering functions for both variations of this sound. I found good results with the Bobinga 9 ply 10 inch tom and then we're going to layer either a one shot acoustic snares off sample on top of it or we're going to use another stock sound for similar results. Personally I think it sounds better with an imported sample so we're going to start there and then we'll move on to the stock variation next. So I've loaded up the Bobinga 9 ply 10 inch tom on my module. The first thing you'll find with listening to this tom sample on its own is that it's very tom like as it should be. So what we need to do is reduce that as much as possible. Snares without their wires aren't dissimilar to toms, but they tend to be a little bit shorter and have a more defined strike. So achieving that is our first port of call. I've gone with a shell depth of 8 as I think that that's weighty enough for what I want, and I've left the head type as coated. I've tuned it up a fair bit here to 22. This gave me the snappy feel that I was looking for and obviously it brings the pitch up, but not far enough to match the sample that I'm going to use. So after applying a little bit of muffling I've applied the tape 4 level of muffling here I then went on to the advanced tab and used the pitch parameter to bring the tuning up even higher now you might be wondering why not just turn up the tuning more back on the other page but there actually is a difference between these two parameters the tuning function although it does affect the pitch it also affects the timbre of the sound and how sort of tight it feels on the attack and the decay whereas the pitch function just warps the sample up or down in pitch so I find it best to get a ballpark tuning and more importantly the feel right with the tuning parameter and then fine tune the pitch with the advanced tab also you'll see that I'm not going to bother with the snare buzz parameter either because that doesn't actually do anything unless I've got a snare loaded onto at least one other pad if you're going to use this snares off sound as an auxiliary pad with a different snare sample loaded to your main snare then you can dial that snare buzz in to taste as you see fit. Next on the mic pages I've gone for a position of inside 4 here. What I find with this function is that as you go further out with the mic placement it takes quite a bit of the depth of the sound away and it adds in a lot more top end to the attack whereas when you go further in it becomes fuller but with a duller attack. For this, although attack heavy is quite suited to the sound, I don't like how plasticky the attack and the lack of depth on the quieter hits feels further out. And ideally I want to retain as much warmth as possible, but of course this will vary depending on what bass sample you use and what you want the dynamics of your sound to end up like. On the elements tab I've taken the overheads down to minus 8 and usually on most of the snare sounds I take out some of the room mic here too but I actually felt like it was adding to the character of this particular sound so I've raised it up to plus 2 dB here. I've also narrowed the width of the mic on the next tab as it just felt a bit more focused this way. Going down onto the transient designer I've added some attack and I've brought the release time down. So here's an example of this sound as is before I I've added the sample layer. So 
So that sounds okay, but it is pretty much just a muted tom at this point, so I'm going to turn on my sample layer, which sounds like this on its own. This sample is one that I've recorded myself, it's my own snare drum, a pork by 13 by 7 maple snare, and of course it's a sample with the wires turned off. Then I'm going to use the fade 3 function to blend it in at the low to mid velocities. I'm not going to adjust the pitch or anything like that, I'm going to leave it as is, but I will add some basic EQ and compression to that which you can see here, and I'm also going to add in a reasonable amount of room sound and reverb because I feel like this is the kind of sound that benefits from additional ambience. Of course you can tailor that whichever way you want to taste. And here's how it sounds now. As you can hear, that's a pretty big difference. And that's understandable because this sample is very different to what we started with, but all of those steps were to make sure that we got a half decent layer underneath to support the sample with some variation between the velocity layers and the positioning. The sample on its own would of course sound very machine gunny, so we need to make sure that there's something else under it to kind of blend it in. And of course, it doesn't have to be this sample, any sample of a snare drum without the wires on will work. I've had great success with a sample from the Get Good Drums library, the Modern and Massive, or from samples taken from Superior Drummer 2. And the approach that I took with those samples was pretty much identical, putting a sample on top of a stock sound and then using all of the tuning parameters to match that sample the best you can. Now, if you don't have any samples to use or for any reason you don't particularly want to use a sample, you can use a similar method to this just with a Roland stock sound. So I've copied over the last kit to a new slot and I'm going to leave all of the bass sample parameters the same and we'll go straight down to the sub instrument page. We're going to use the Brush Tom 12 inch sample because I feel that this sample doesn't have a really obvious Tom like attack. So that's going to help liken it a little bit more to the imported sample version. We're doing this mainly to add a different attack attack texture. So we'll bring down the depth quite significantly to 3 which raises the pitch a bit. Then we'll pop the tuning up to 50 as I think that sits quite nicely for the feel. Then we're going to take it up even further with the pitch parameter to 280 to match the pitch to the original sample better. Another thing that I felt helped glue this together is a parameter that I rarely ever use, the pitch sweep parameter. I felt like putting this on at minus 8 helped tie it all together a bit more. It gives it a slight pitch bend that complements the original Tom bass layer. On to the next page, we don't have as many mic parameters for this instrument, so we'll put the mic position to inside 2, and then I'm going to go down to the transient switch, where we're going to add a little bit of attack on the transient to this one. We're going to put the transient time at 5, with the attack up to 50, add in a little bit of release at 11, then I've put the gain of the transient up to plus 1 to give it that little extra boost. The stock sounds are often a bit louder than sample imports, unless the sample is very loud when it's normalised. So we'll go back onto the first page and take that down to plus 3 instead of plus 6. And then this is how that sounds. The general pitch of this is quite similar to what I had with the imported sample, but it doesn't have the exact same kind of attack, or that little extra ringy overtone that the sample has, and it does sound a bit more like a tom. It is still very usable though, and it does give a little bit more of a variation between the layers, so it's going to come down to personal preference. I've had varying levels of success with different tom samples instead of the brush tom, but a lot of them do sound a little bit too tom-like on the attack, so I felt like this was the closest representation that worked. So I'll play both of these sounds back to back so you can get a feel for what the differences are. What you will notice playability wise are that the one shot samples are a little bit more prone to machine gunning than the internal samples are. And that's a trade off that I personally don't mind because I think that the sound character for this one is more important. But everybody's going to be different so the stock version might be more suited to you or your playing. And of course if you follow this tutorial to make your own version of the sound you can edit any of these parameters as you see fit. Whatever's going to work better to match either the sample that you're importing or the musical style or the sound character that you're after. You could go for a much lower pitch and you'll still have a very usable sound or you could increase or decrease the sustain on that tom to let it ring out or to shorten it as much as you like. It's really up to you. If this video helped in any way be sure to pop a like on it, subscribe if you want more tutorials like this. 
And I've also got an announcement coming up regarding custom kits and samples. So stay tuned for that. Or if you're watching this in the future, go and have a look for it. There's also going to be another couple of TD50 videos on the screen at the end. There's a bunch of other sound design concepts there for you to check out. Let's listen to how these sound back to back and I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>